All right, everybody. Let's jump into it. Hold on a second. Let me clear this. Uh, 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 uh. All right. My lovely imps. Uh, J.K. Rowling. Ah, boo, ah. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, J.K. Rowling. Boo. Okay, no, I'm not actually kidding. I don't like J.K. Rowling very much. Uh, and there's a number of reasons for that. The main one being is that she is a, a vocal, uh, trans exclusive radical feminist. And by what that actually means is that she's not actually a feminist. See, uh, trans exclusive radical feminists, AKA TERFs are a branch of feminism that, and this is, it, it, I know it's gonna sound weird. They believe in gender and sex essentialism, even though that is at complete odds with the core principles of the entire feminist movement, uh, that is what they believe. Uh, they believe that trans women are not women, they believe that trans men are not men, and they are, of course, wrong. And of course, their position is absurd. Now, J.K. Rowling has been a vocal uh, turf, aka trans exclusionary radical feminist, for some time, um, and she has gotten increasingly vile with her rhetoric and with her behavior um, uh, as time has gone on. And this has cost her an incredible amount of, uh, of, of uh, goodwill, uh, seeing as how at one point in time, the Harry Potter novels, which were written by J.K. Rowling, were at one point considered to be sort of uh, progressive darlings. Um, even though they do have some problematic uh, messages, for example, slavery being like like the, the series mocks the people who are anti-slavery it's fucked up there's a lot of weird issues um there's some really really strange decisions with the naming conventions with some of the characters uh some would call it racist i would tend to agree however the general messaging of harry potter is very progressive and as a result uh jk rowling was sort of celebrated as a famous progressive author um, and of course that goodwill has been rapidly burned through and it is only getting worse, which brings us to the subject matter, the core subject matter of today. A really amazing trans, uh, video maker by the name of Jesse Gender, uh, recently made a very tame and very calm, uh, post on Twitter about Harry Potter, uh, a Harry Potter game called Hogwarts Legacy. Now, Hogwarts Legacy, there's a whole bunch of discourse around it. Uh, once again, problematic elements, etc. But the biggest thing that people are mad about right now is the fact that if you buy Hogwarts Legacy, you are giving a lot of money to an open and avowed transphobe. Yeah, so people have a pretty good reason to be critical of this game. Um, and there's lots of different positions you can take on boycotts, but I think it's a reasonable position for some people to not want to buy the game. Now, Jesse Gender is a, uh, in my opinion, an absolutely incredible uh, content creator, uh, makes amazing videos uh, talking about Star Trek, talking about media in general, uh, directly debunking transphobes. Um, but again, what we're talking about today is a tweet, and I'm going to read this tweet from Jesse Gender. Here's Jesse Gender's tweet, all right? I will not begrudge anyone their love of past works or, or things that they already own that they take comfort in. This is referring to Harry Potter. I own the first nine Harry Potter movies and all seven Harry Potter books myself, but any support of something like Hogwarts Legacy is harmful. Now, in my opinion, that is a remarkably civil, very, very measured tweet uh, that essentially says, I can't support this product anymore because, um, because I, I think it's harmful. Now, um, if, if you feel like, uh, like, like, like that's not like all that big of a deal, like that tweet isn't all that big of a deal, you would be right. It's a pretty, like I said, tame and civil tweet. But JK Rowling, who let me remind you, 
is one of the most famous people in the entire world and has 13.9 million followers on Twitter alone decided to quote tweet. Uh, uh, not, oh, sorry, <laughs> I should be clear, not quote tweet, directly tag and then screen grab Jesse Gender's tweet. It is a direct tag. Now, now there's a lot we could talk about with regard to, uh, this sort of thing, with regard to, well, you know, Jesse Gender made a critique in the public eye. And that means, you know, shouldn't people be entitled to a public response? And I would say that is generally true. However, that kind of, that calculus does change a little bit the larger and larger you get. The bigger and bigger that your platform is, the more people that you can send towards any person by simply responding to them. And it means you have to be very careful who you respond to because the simple fact of, of reality is that some people who have a mild critique of you don't deserve to have a deluge of angry fans uh, jump on them uh, for just making a minor uh, critique of you or even a major critique of you. And this gets especially true when there is hate speech or, uh, or very, very, very angry and emotionally charged people involved. And there's another aspect as well, which is that in any community of a certain size, you begin to have certain members in your community who aren't actually under your entire control. Now, uh, you might be able to police some of these out of your community, but when you get to the size of JK Rowling, where you are a literal global celebrity, was the one of the most popular book series of all times, a movie that made millions upon millions upon millions of dollars, that almost every single, uh, that it was translated into almost every single language on the planet. This is a level of fan base that is so large that most people can't even comprehend it. I don't even know if JK Rowling can fully comprehend the size of her fan base. And when you get to that size, there are a lot of people that are in your audience that you can't control at all, which means you have to be very careful with what you say and do when you're directing that audience especially if you were directing that audience directly at an individual. So let's look at the tweet again. Here's JK Rowling, deeply disappointed that Jesse Gender doesn't realize pure think is incompatible with owning anything connected with me in any form. The truly righteous wouldn't just burn their books and movies, but the local library, anything with an owl on it and their own pet dogs. Do better. That is fucking insane, okay? Not only is it like, you can look at the tweet right here and Jesse's tweet says, I will not begrudge anyone their love of past works or the thing that they already own that they take comfort in. I own the first nine movies and all seven books, but any support of something like Hogwarts Legacy is harmful. And she takes this to go in the most, one of the most unhinged responses I can imagine, just flying off the handle and, and acting as though J Jesse Gender is some sort of puritanical freak for saying, I, I'm sorry, I can't support the newest game. I don't want to give you more money because you are supporting a worldview that is antithetical to my existence. And that's the ultimate reason, by the way. The ultimate reason why Jesse Gender, a trans woman, opposes the game Hogwarts Legacy is because it directly benefits someone who is spending her time online s spreading disinformation about trans people to literally millions of people. And again, we've talked about JK Rowling on this show many, many times. JK Rowling's positions on trans people are not exactly secret. JK Rowling is remarkably anti-trans, vocally anti-trans. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, I wanted to make sure that, uh, given the fact, given the fact that, uh, this, 
this particular tweet um, had 918 retweets, 1,454 quote tweets, tweets, and 12,000 likes from her massive fan base. I wanted us to spend some time hearing Jesse Gender's side of the story. And thankfully, Jesse Gender made a video. So we're gonna react to that together, and we're gonna hear Jesse Gender's position from her own mouth. Uh, and I, I like once again. Hello, I Interwebs, really, and I, welcome oh, to. Oh, oops, sorry about that. I really fucking like Jesse Gender. I've watched a number of Jesse Gender's videos, and I'm quite a fan. So we're gonna watch this video together, and we're gonna react to it, and then we're gonna send some love over to Jesse Gender's way. So before we get started, let's I, do I just, this. Just... Let's fucking do this. By the way, this is Jesse Gender's channel. Uh, here you go. As you can see, Jesse Gender. Uh, uh, Jesse Gender. Oh wait, I'm in this video. I forgot. I'm in this video. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I am in the video that you see right here. The the video that's titled Sex in Star Trek, Exploring Gene Roddenberry's Sexual Frontier. I am one of the voice actors in this video. If you've never seen it, you should go watch it. It's all talking about sex in the world of Star Trek. And Jesse has a really great outfit and an amazing style. As you can see, uh, Jesse has an, an incredible aesthetic and uh, yeah, you're gonna. I, I I can tell you, you'll love the video. Okay, I, I forgot to mention that. But this is Jesse's channel. Uh, I hope that you will consider subscribing to Jesse and also checking out her videos. So uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Here we go. Show you. Look at my uh, sweatshirt. Isn't it awesome and amazing? Uh, I adore it. Also, it's snowing in Seattle today. That never happens. It's a Christmas miracle. You can even see it. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't know Jesse lived in Seattle. What the fuck? Wait, that's fucking sick. I didn't know Jesse lived in Seattle. That's si why are there so many awesome people in Seattle? How did I miss that detail? That's fucking poggers. Yeah, maybe we should do like a IRL collab at some point. Yeah, I didn't know that. I, I just didn't pick that up. Somehow I missed it. Anyway, let's continue. Not there. But with that having been said, uh, something a little bit darker to talk about briefly here. If you hadn't heard, uh, this morning I woke up to uh, a couple of messages from people telling me that Queen Turf herself, J.K. Rowling, had retweeted me. And um, yeah, uh, that's uh, not exactly a very fun way to start off the day. Now, we've seen this a bunch of times. J.K. Rowling will retweet a trans person or someone supporting trans people because her Twitter timeline is just all about trans people at this point. And it will eventually lead to a ton of harassment and targeted uh, attacking of that person. She knows that this is what her audience will do. It's basically how Twitter works at this point, especially since Elon Musk has made it more and more of a platform that is okay with transphobia and hatred. Um, and so, sadly, that is what happened to me. I definitely woke up with to a lot of messages in my inbox from people that were less kind and even more so in my mentions um, and people sort of replying to my tweets and things like that. Um, and it was um, not very great. Also, and this is just a random aside, but uh, I shared a picture of my cat, Newt, because uh, he's running around here somewhere uh, just to make people smile in the face of J.K. Rowling's bigotry. And like, there were turfs that like attacked me for loving cats and attacked my cat. Like what miserable people attack cats? That just... By the way, uh, that's something that has happened to me, too. Uh, when I, I got in a beef with this weird tra conservative transphobe, and they went on my Instagram and made jokes about killing my dog, Yoda. The dog you all just saw a few minutes ago? I'm not, I'm not kidding you. They're actually, those comments are still up on my Instagram. If you go back to the oldest pictures of Yoda, if you scroll through, you'll see a bunch of transphobes making jokes about killing my dog. These people are insane. And this is exactly what I was just talking about, about the whole platform thing, about how uh, even if JK Rowling wa wasn't a rampant transphobe herself, the size of her audience means that she has to be very careful when she chooses people to, uh, to put in front of that audience. Because this wild shit, this fucking evil shit happens. It's because they know it's an easy emotional response? Yeah, of course. That's why they do it. This is, by the way, one of the things I talk about all the time is the sheer amount of harassment that trans creators uh, experience online in this current environment. It's actually overwhelming. Let's continue. 
That's just sad. Also should be noted her take was super weird because my tweet was like, probably one of the kindest tweets that I could have ever done about JK Rowling. I've been very clear in- You guys, we just looked at it before. You all know we just looked at the tweet before. I have not watched this video. This is, I did not pre-watch. This is a fresh react, but we just went and looked at that tweet. I, I hope you guys will agree. It was a pretty civil tweet. A lot of my content that JK Rowling and gender critical ideology uh, is incredibly harmful to trans people for numerous reasons. It spread lies. I'll let you look at the other videos that I've linked down below that go into that. Uh, but my tweet wasn't really even directly about any of that. It was quite literally just saying that because JK Rowling is so anti-transgender and because she has used her continued platform as the head of the Harry Potter franchise to promote that transphobia and also the fact that she continues to use the fact that Harry Potter stays relevant um, as as a justification for her uh, transphobia in the media, quite literally having said numerous times that like, well, people are still buying my stuff, so must, they must agree with me in my anti-transgender views, um, which is absolutely horrible and, and is not actually actually the case. Many people sadly don't care about trans issues enough to like even be aware uh, of any of that stuff as they continue to- Yeah, there's just a lot of people who don't know. There is a there is a ton of normies out there who don't know any trans people who don't know that that JK Rowling has been on a kick of of going after trans people for like literal years now to the degree that she pals around with people that she has been photographed and 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 supports people who say that they want to reduce the nu the number of trans people in the world pretty clear what they're what they pretty clear what they want and these are the people that JK Rowling associates with publicly so yeah unfortunately there's a lot of people who don't know this and so it's actually kind of important to let people know that this is the case so that they can make decisions as to whether they want to support stuff from JK Rowling buy Harry Potter merch, um, which is sad, but it's its own whole discussion, but is not a direct endorsement of her hateful and bigoted views. But anyway, she takes it that way and uses it and wields it that way. And so my take simply was that uh, if you wish to support trans people, you can't continue to support the Harry Potter franchise, at the very least, uh, while J uh, JK Rowling is in charge of it. Maybe if it gets bought by someone who is actively trans supportive uh, somewhere down the line, then maybe we can sort of uh, be more supportive of ongoing Harry Potter projects. Uh, but as of standing right now things like Hogwarts Legacy or any more Fantastic Beast movies that I doubt will ever get made. <laughs> uh, you can't support them without uh, without it being um, directly harmful to trans people and, and sending a message to trans people around you in your life that um, that uh, you, you care more about your entertainment than you do about our rights. And it's just sort of a, a line of solidarity uh, that is important to draw. That was what my tweet was about. And then the one she retweeted was me just saying, but I also don't begrudge anyone who still loves Harry Potter and still enjoys uh, yeah. like Harry Potter stuff uh, that they've already bought. Like for me, for example, like quite literally, I believe it's right over here. Uh, I don't know where they are. My, my shelf of way too many DVDs. Like literally right here on my shelf, I have all my Harry Potter DVDs up until the ninth movie, the ninth Fantastic Beast movie, because that's right before she came out as a horrible transphobe. Um, I have all those DVDs and I have all the books and I'm saying I don't begrudge anyone for having those or for still caring about those. I know it's sometimes it's hard for me to go back and watch those or look at them anymore uh, because of JK Rowling. But if someone still finds joy and love and caring in them, I don't begrudge them that and don't say like you're hateful or anti-trans or anything for having those things. Um, that that. There are nine movies? Yeah, there's nine. There are seven original movies, I think? No. Oh. Seven? Shit. I think there's actually more than nine movies now. I think there's ten movies now. There's there's eight original movies, and, and then there's uh, two Fantastic Beasts, three Fantastic Beast movies? There's eight original movies and three Fantastic Beasts. So it's 11 total. Okay, there we go. We got it. Oh my God, we figured it out. That's 11 total. So there's eight Harry Potter movies and three Fantastic Beast movies. The reason why she has nine is because she didn't buy the latest Fantastic Beast movie. Um, yeah, I have, I have not heard positive things about the Fantastic Beast movie. As in, I've literally never heard someone say that they liked them. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. That's not me trying to be petty. I just literally haven't. I've never I don't even I don't even know if I know anybody who's seen them. 11 th full-length movies? Yep.
Let's continue. That literally was my take. <laughs> like, I don't begrudge anyone for for still liking Harry Potter. Uh, just you can't support it going forward with more money and attention um, if you wish to be supportive of uh, the trans community uh, as a whole. That was my take. That was my thought. I don't think that that's all that radical of a concept. Uh, and that's what she retweeted me about. So that's just... Like, of all the things that she could have gone after me for, she went after me for, like, my mildest of takes about her, uh, which I find kind of funny. Like, I didn't talk anything about her books or any criticism of her work. Like, I could have talked about the problematic tropes that she has in her book or the, like, very harmful view of feminism. I mean, like, what was up with everyone laughing at Hermione trying to, like, fight for Hell's Hell's rights? Like, that still bugs that's me. What I that's what I was talking about. That was one of the things that I was talking about that was really weird about the Harry Potter books. In the Harry Potter books, Hermione tries to to fight for, okay, oh my God, oh my God. When I'm gonna tell you that, oh my God, those of you who aren't familiar with the series are gonna make, it's gonna sound like I'm crazy. There is a thing in Harry Potter called a house elf and a house elf, it's a slave. House elves are all slaves. They're literally enslaved. They're magically enslaved um and they're they're house elves and uh in the book in the books one of the characters hermione uh is is trying to fight for house for for house elf freedom and all of the characters make fun of her and then the book the book agrees with the idea that the house elves actually need to be slaves I'm not, I'm not kidding you. It is in the series, it's implied very heavily that the house elves are like, they aren't happy if they aren't enslaved with very few exceptions. Like there's a handful of house elves that are like, that can be free, but most of them just need to be slaves. That is, it is so, it's so fucked up. It's so fucked up. And also, I, I mentioned this slightly before, okay? But I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna bring it up now since, you know, since Jesse brought it up first, okay? All right, there's a character, okay? In the series, okay? Here you go. This is the character, okay? And his name is Kingsley Shacklebolt, okay? He's an He's like one of the only Afri explicitly African characters in the series, and his name is Shacklebolt. It is, uh, and that's hardly the only one, okay? Uh, J.K. Rowling was once ash asked if there were any Jewish wizards at, at Hogwarts, and she replied, on the, seemingly on the spot, yes, Andrew Goldstein. Uh, also, hold on. God, I can't believe we're gonna do this. Okay, this is this one's gonna make you go Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, God fucking damn it. Okay, hold on. Let me just. Dear God. Just, let me just do this. Harry Potter, goblins, okay? Goblins are bankers. They look like this. All, gob all of the goblins are bankers. The goblins are all in the banking industry. They have a giant bank. They are known for being, uh, they are known for being greedy uh, for being um, uh, conniving. And one of the major goblin characters actually uh, 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 secretly betrays um, all of the other characters uh, in the name of defending the honor of the bank. Yeah, it's called Gringotts. And all of the goblins sit around rubbing their hands together and talking about gold all the time. I'm not kidding you. It is so fucking bad. It's it's like these are the things that I was talking about that are like legitimate problematic elements in Harry Potter.
Oh, yeah, 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 I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. In the fucking movie, in the fucking movie, in the fucking movie, the bank has a Star of David on the floor. I'm not fucking, oh my god, I know. Oh, it's so bad, it's so fucking bad. It's so fucking bad. I'm, I'm not kidding, this isn't a joke, I'm not, again, I know, I know people were making fun of me for saying I'm not kidding all the time, but yeah. The star wasn't deliberate, I know it wasn't deliberate, but everything else was. There's a great Jon Stewart clip, oh, I can't watch this or else. Or else I'll get slapped. I can't do that. I would love to, but I, I'll get clapped. It is really bad, okay? It's really bad. Like, it, like these aspects are genuinely worth criticizing out of Harry Potter, okay? And many people have. But guess what? Jesse Gender didn't even bring that up in the original tweet. Jesse Gender was being super diplomatic. <laughs> Let's continue. To this day. I mean, looking back and knowing J.K. Rowling's politics now, I guess we kind of very clearly know what was going on with that sort of feminism message with Hermione and everyone laughing at her now, just being aware of J.K. Rowling's very neoliberal politics. But um, at the time, it still bugged me. Now I'm very much aware of why. There's a lot I could have criticized about her work, but I also know that like it meant a lot to me and it meant a lot to other people. And so I'm not gonna try and take that away from people to try to ignore the fact that these were works of art that meant a lot to us um, and felt like it was accepting uh, of us at a time where we needed that acceptance in our lives. Um, and sadly, JK Rowling has made that clear that that was not her intention. Uh, that is not who she wished to include in her magical fantasy world, uh, but, you know, uh, it meant something to us. And so I could have been critical of all of that stuff, but I just wanted to say, I'm not gonna begrudge anyone for still finding uh, something meaningful to them within her work if they already own it. Just don't help a transphobe going forward. I mean, let's look Seems at her easy. Tweet. It's weird, right? About like pure think or whatnot, which sounds like her failed attempt to sound Orwellian, claiming victimization that people might do the opposite of what I said and burn her books instead of supporting them. And they're- Oh yeah, as Felix, as Felix, Felix Forrester brings up, don't forget about Cho Chang. Yeah, the, uh, the most prominent Asian character uh, in the uh, in the series is named Cho Chang, which is uh, a a complete bungling of real Asian names that would have been like it. I believe, if I remember correctly, it's a a a mixture of a uh, of of a surname from one country and a uh, a first name from another country, just sort of smashed together. Even though, if I remember correctly, hold on, let me just double check on this. Just want to make sure. I want to check on. I want to make sure I got all my my information correct. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh wait, hold on. Can I just show you this? Oh god, I'm gonna show you something so terrible. Okay, this is so bad. Oh, I love this one. This one's so funny. Here. All right, you guys ready? Look, I've never, I, I'm Asian and I've never heard of someone named Cho Chang. Yeah, that's because it's just a made up name. It was just terrible. Look at this, okay? All right, this is terrible. This was, this was like an official, this was based off of actual statements from JK Rowling, okay? So the American school, okay, so Hogwarts is the UK one, then all of Eastern Europe is a part of D Durmstrang. Then France, Germany, Portugal, and uh, everywhere else in Western Europe besides the UK is Bobatons. Then school number nine does not even have a name, but she did say it exists. It's just called school number nine, Arab Middle East. Then the entirety of Africa, all of Africa, goes to a single magic school called Ugadu. Then all of Southeast Asia and the Pacific Islands go to school number 11, not named. All of Asia, China, and in, or all of South Asia, China, and India 
goes to school number 10. Then Mahuto, Mahuto Koro is the Japanese and Korean school, which if you know anything about the history of Japan and Korea, yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. What that just like, oh my God. It's how could you get anything wrong? Okay, Mohuto Koro, Mo, Mohuto Koro, okay? All of Russia, all of Ukraine, all of Mongolia, all of Kazakhstan and Turkey, apparently all go to a single school named Koldov Storets. All of South America goes to Castello Brujo. Just, just, can we just admit that JK Rowling was having a massive cracker moment when she, when she came up with this? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh thank you. I'm glad you guys are all reminding me of all of this shit. <clears throat> uh, Uncle Gumball says, reminder, Fenrir get, oh yeah, you know what, I can just tell you about this. So let me tell you about another thing that's really fucked up, okay? So JK Rowling herself said that in her universe, um, werewolves were an allegory for AIDS, okay? Where, you know, lycanthropy is supposed to be an allegory for AIDS. And now, now you might already be realizing what's kind of wrong with that, right? The idea that like, uh, that, that being a werewolf, which turns you into a beast, that, you know, you turn into a beast and attack people. That's what werewolves do, because they lose control of themselves and they become, a, they attack people. That is supposed to be an allegory for AIDS. Already problematic. Um, but it gets even worse. Because uh, one of the main characters, one of the main villains, is a werewolf by the name of Fenrir Greyback. And Fenrir Greyback, I'm, I'm, oh my god, I, I, I'm gonna say it again, please forgive me. I am not making this up. Fe I, I, I assure you, this is 100% this is veri ver verified. Go check it out yourself. If you don't believe me, go read the books. I've read the books back to cover to cover a million times because I used to be a big Harry Potter fan. Fenrir Greyback is a villain werewolf who is, uh, who is known for deliberately, uh, deliberately positioning himself near children when he becomes a werewolf so that he can create more werewolves by biting them. I am not even exaggerating even a little bit. That is literally in the text. That is in the text. That's not even like external. That's not even from comments from JK Rowling. That is just in the text. A, an AIDS allegory, one of the main characters is a AIDS allegory werewolf that just deliberately bites children. And also, if you want to get even, if you want to go even one level deeper into how fucked up it is, a, a, the main like uh, the, when the werewolves are first introduced in the Prisoner of Azkaban, the main story is about uh, Remus Re, Remus Lupin, uh, the good werewolf, uh, how he takes medicine that prevents him from turning into a werewolf, so that he doesn't bite people. Because, you know, you know, AIDS turns you into a, a person, you know, you can't control yourself when you have AIDS. When you have AIDS, you just, you know, you just g go after everybody. You have to take medicine to keep yourself under control. It's so fucked up. It's so fucked up. All right. All right. I've done enough. I said I wasn't going to do this, but I couldn't resist. Uh, typical evil, bad faith demon mama going harder but whatever, let's watch the rest of Jesse's video because as you can see, I am much meaner than Jesse was. Uh, Jesse was very, very civil and very diplomatic. I am not. <laughs> let's continue. Bugs too, apparently, because transportive people like to kill pets in defiance of transphobes. 
what is it with these people in like pet hatred? It's it's very weird. I didn't I did not know that this was like a thing, I guess. But anyways, JK Rowling, maybe it's that people are so hurt by you that they don't want to have your work in their house anymore. This is something I spoke about in uh, this video that should be on screen right now about how TERFs and gender critical people are often privileged white women who often only view womanhood through their privileged version of womanhood. That by somehow not having a platform, not having people read every single word that they put out, people maybe not agreeing with every single thing you say and rejecting your hate when you target a marginalized community and not giving you endless amounts of money and a megaphone to speak, to them not having all of that is tantamount to being attacked and marginalized without actually understanding what marginalization actually is and only viewing it through how they are sometimes, you know, sexistly attacked as women but are ultimately also still privileged in many other ways. And so only view any criticism against them as somehow sexism against them. And so that's what J.K. Rowling sees trans people speaking out against her hate as, as sexism against her. When really we're just talking about her privilege and how she's targeted a marginalized community. Which, by the way... Okay, okay, one more thing. Uh, based, based arguments from Jesse Gender, but I, I realize I've been unfair to J.K. Rowling. So I want to share one more piece of J.K. Rowling Harry Potter lore, okay? Unironically, okay, according to JK Rowling, this one is not mean, okay, I promise. I'm not, I'm not saying that she did something, I'm not being an SJW, I'm not, you know, I'm not going, you know, I'm not getting triggered. I'm just telling you, uh, I'm just telling you a piece of Harry Potter lore, okay, okay? So according to, according to JK Rowling, um, previous to, uh, previous to, uh, to like toilets being, um, being introduced to the wizarding world, uh, wizards would just magic their shit and piss away. Like, they would just teleport it away. So, according to her, according to her, you know, via interviews, uh, because wizards did not have toilet technology, because they didn't believe in technology because they had magic, they would just basically shit their pants and then teleport the shit away. Yeah. I think this one is fake. No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Is that really is it was that was that really like a deep cut misinformation? Let's double check. I swear to god I read this myself. <laughs> motherfuckers motherfuckers this is a vice article it is not fake <laughs> everybody poops even wizards thanks to pottermore the digital publishing e-commerce and entertainment and news company from harry potter co author jk rowling we know that fictional harry potter universe wizards shat their pants on the regular until the 18th century this is from the wizarding world hogwarts didn't always have bathrooms oops here we go we'll go to the actual tweet Hogwarts didn't always have bathrooms. Before adopting muggle plumbing methods in the 18th century, witches and wizards simply relieved themselves wherever they stood and vanished the evidence. You really, did you really think that Demon Mama would give you false Harry Potter lore? Did you really? Did you really? Yeah, the real question is where did they teleport it to and why? Also, what the fuck? Let's just, anyway, that's all I wanted to give you before we get back to the serious stuff. Uh, I, you know, I just wanted to be fair. You know, I wanted to be very fair to JK Rowling. So let's continue. I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't, I won't, I'll try not to distract us anymore from Jesse Gender's uh, video.
Hey, she still has all the privilege. I mean, despite having made two failing terrible movies and whatever the hell Cursed Child was, J.K. Rowling will still get Warner Brothers support to make more TV shows and movies. I mean, David Zaslav, who's taken everything else off of HBO Max, wants to have more Harry Potter crap, apparently. It's the same, I'm being cancelled for my hate speech, so give me more money and more platforms that you see many right-wing figures using to gain attention while throwing marginalized Bro. people under the bus. Well, Rowling, I'll be honest, I'm deeply disappointed in you for not realizing that. And it just goes to show, ultimately, at the end of the day, that, uh, you know, gender critical ideology is not really about anything specific other than being hateful against trans people and not listening to what we have to say, um, the nuance yep. of our arguments, the fact oh, that, you know, for yep. me, for example, I've been very clear about, like, sending harassment to J.K. Rowling is absolutely awful, even though I think she's doing a lot of harm and hate, we should be fighting back and pushing back against her. Um, no, ignore all of that, any of that nuance. Just, you know, retweet me, remove contacts, and send people to harass me. It just, it just really just shows that there's no paying attention to it. It's actually interesting. Uh, remember how in the last segment we were doing, I talked about how right-wingers always have to use uh, the removal of, context, of context? Removing context is like number one in the right-wing toolbook. Uh, it just lets them clip things out of context. It lets them manipulate the narrative however they want, and it lets them play into the ridiculous prejudices and bigotries of their audience. It's almost like, damn, they all do the exact same thing trans people actually say. I mean, if, if we know this just by the fact they say, like, you can't change sex, and it's like, no, no trans person is saying that we can, like, change our chromosomes or whatever, at least not at this point in, uh, in our technological development, but there's a lot more nuance there than anyone will give us credit for. It's all just about hating trans people and, you know, targeting trans people and not listening to us or actually what we have to say. But having said that, I actually want to focus on two uh, more important things. One, is that my response to all of this Good was night, to tweet out something very targeted and saying, hey, JK Rowling, you're doing a lot of harm. You've heard a lot of trans people. Here's some information on why that, that is next the stream case. I think that that is probably one of the best responses I could do on Twitter because you ain't gonna win an argument on Twitter. Uh, you can just sort of direct people towards uh, resources that can be helpful. And also point to the fact that um, JK Rowling wants to take an us versus them narrative. Her whole spiel at this point is saying uh, trans women are a danger to cisgender women, which isn't the case. Trans rights and trans liberation are a fight for women's rights and women's liberation and trans rights can only exist what so so true remember how at the beginning of this video i mentioned that the uh the trans exclusionary radical feminists are feminists in like genuinely they're only in their name they only they steal the name feminism um to pretend that they are actually feminist but they ultimately reassert gender uh, gender and sex essentialism. They make the argument that there are essential traits that make a woman a woman. That, uh, and in fact, you will catch them doing this all the time. They will do, uh, they will make arguments like, oh, if you don't have a womb, you're not a woman. As if childbirth is the only thing that determines a woman's worth or value. Literally insane. But they call themselves feminist, despite the fact that their positions stand in opposition to the entire history of feminism. Yeah. ...in a world that is equal for everybody. The only way that trans people will ever be liberated and ever be equal is if we live in a society that is equal for everybody, trans or not, cisgender women, men, Everybody, people of color, uh, people of different bodies, able people, disabled people, things like that. Um, that's the only way that we will ever exist in a trans equal world. And that's why I always say a fight for trans rights is a fight for everyone's rights because we can only exist in a world where everyone is treated equally. But the last thing that I really, really want to focus on here within all of this is to say that, yes, I did wake up to a lot of harassment and nasty stuff and i'm sure i will achieve more because jk rowling has put her eye of sauron on me or her eye of dolores umbridge on me whatever whatever harry potter metaphor you want to work in there uh <laughs> if i was a cleverer person i would have thought of one but then having been said one thing that heartened me and made me so filled with joy was the amount of kindness that was also sent my way my dms were not only filled with horrible people but i also got speaking of which when we are done with this I will be asking all of you imps to pop over, leave a comment and a like, say love from the imps, you know, love from demon mama and the imps, whatever, anything, whatever, whether you, if you just leave a heart, that's okay. But I, I want, I'm going to do a call to action at the end of this because 
I assure you, we could, if all of us left a comment, we would not outnumber the amount of hate that Jesse Gender has unjustly received in, in the last few days. So but let's continue. So many messages of people just sending me love and kindness and sweet things saying, hey, I know you're probably going to go through it today. Um, so I just want to let you know you're absolutely lovely and amazing. I got that in my tweets. I got people reaching out directly, friends of mine, people in my comment sections on YouTube. Uh, and honestly, that just fills me with so much joy because it reminds me that in the face of hate and bigotry and people trying to divide us, more people are ready to stand up and be with somebody, whether they are trans or not. Fucking know they it. see somebody and say, hey, we wish to accept you, make you know that you are like part of our community, are a human being, and are someone that fills us with joy because you all fill me with joy. Um, and, and that just, Aww. it always makes me feel so happy to see that in the face of hate, that that is also what I get in response. And honestly, get it in so much more quantities than the hate and vitriol. Um, it, it is honestly just very meaningful to me. I am aware that the reason that I get so much love uh, in the face of moments like this is because I am a very public trans person who has a platform that talks about these things and tries to also spread kindness and love. Um, and I know that that is a privilege that a lot of trans people who also support spreading love and kindness and community um, don't have. They don't have the platform, they don't have the reach um, and community that, that I have as a YouTube creator. So what I will remind all of you is, is that when you do see a trans person, whether they be retweeted by JK Rowling or actively being targeted in much worse ways than, you know, nonsense Twitter drama, um, remember to reach out and tell them that they are loved, that they are accepted, that they're a human being, and Seriously. that they should be cared for. Because Seriously. ultimately, that's the most important thing. And moments like this with J.K. Rowling show me that that is what we can do in response as a community. We can stand in solidarity together, and we will stand in solidarity together, and that we were always stronger in the face of all of these things. We just have to recognize and realize it and not focus on the hate and awfulness, but focus on that and remind ourselves to do so for everyone in our community, not just the big prominent people like me, um, you know, if I can call myself big and prominent, um, but yeah, everybody, can. everyone in our community deserves love and caring and kindness, especially uh, in the face of bigger tree, but all the time. So I just wish to remind you of all of that. And so I'll end on this. In defiance of the hate sent my way, I ignored Twitter, which I think we should all do, especially now that it's Musk's town. And I went True. and hung out with friends in a reading of The Christmas Carol over on my friend Sarah's channel. And I got to play Fred, Scrooge's earnestly kind nephew, which I think uh, was very sweet and wonderful that I got cast in him. And I thought it was ironic uh, that I got to play him today because he, through the words of Dickens, an author who Rowling has been compared to, had certain things to say about Scrooge that I thought resonated with this situation. And so I'm going to paraphrase Fred's speech in my terrible British accent. He's a comical old fellow, that's the truth, and not so pleasant as he might be. However, his offenses carry their own punishment. His wealth is of no use to him. He don't do any good with it. He don't make himself comfortable with it. He hasn't the satisfaction of thinking that he is ever going to benefit us with it. I am sorry for him. Who suffers by his ill whims? Himself, always. Here, he takes it into his head to dislike us, and he won't come and dine with us. What's the consequence? I think he loses a very good dinner. People like Rowling have been so lost in hate that it's all they see and are spreading harm, and we need to call that out. But it's also sad. From this time of year when we cling together in solidarity and remember ourselves as family, whether it be biological, queer, found, or whatever, those people, like Rowling, are left out, lost in the cold, staring in at our warmth that our community will always provide to each other. Fucking and I true! Find that sad. But let us not dwell on them, because they put themselves out there, for we ourselves have too much joy to focus on for ourselves. So, Merry Holidays and a Happy New Year if you celebrate it, and I'll see you all in my final video of the year. Um, until then, though, my friends, as always, live long and prosper, you beautiful, beautiful people. Well, how incredible. All right, everybody, this is the call to action, okay? I'm gonna send the link, okay? Link is in chat, all right? Here's the thing. Go over there right now. I want you to click through. Right now, there are 21,000 likes and there are 3,635 comments. We have 750 people here. Just hop over there and leave a quick comment of love. Leave a like on the video, okay? And I'm gonna tell you, 
since you've all been so good, I'm going to tell you one more interesting, you know, actually, maybe I'll do two more interesting Harry Potter facts. See, again, like I mentioned before, I was a big fan of, uh, of Harry Potter. So I'm going to give you two more Harry Potter facts. Okay, two more. This is to buy you time to go over there and leave a comment. Like I said, there's 3,635. I would like to see us get a couple more comments on there, show some love, show some solidarity to Jesse Gender, who made us this amazing video and gave us this amazing speech. Uh, let me tell you the facts, okay? Number one, did you know that uh, canonically, and I, I mean this 100% canonically, uh, Dumbledore, Albus Dumbledore's brother, Aberforth Dumbledore, was a sheep rapist. And he went to Azkaban for it. He did time in Azkaban Penitentiary uh, for raping a sheep, for using a love potion on a sheep. Yes, yes, that's right. It's in the text once again. Uh, it is uh, it is referred to um, it is referred to that he did time in Azkaban, and when they ask about it, it's that he it improperly used a love potion on a sheep. Very very uh, very very interesting. Okay, second Dumbledore. Um, uh, second Dumbledore uh, uh, analysis, uh, or. Not second Dumbledore analysis. I meant to say second Harry Potter fact. I don't know. I was reading something in chat and my brain just fried. Second Harry Potter fact is, uh, did you know that it is heavily implied that Dolores Umbridge was uh, gang raped by centaurs? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, actually that's in the text as well. Um, it's not explicit, but uh, we, at the end of the fifth, Book, I believe it's the fifth book uh, uh, after she attempts to uh, displace genocide colonize the uh, the centaurs at the end of the book she is given over to the centaurs uh, so that they can do their justice on her and it is heavily implied that they gang rape her as punishment which is certainly a very, very interesting choice for J.K. Rowling to do. Don't believe me? Check it for yourself. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I said I would only give you two Harry Potter facts, but I'm actually going to give you three Harry Potter facts, okay? <laughs> That's right. That's how generous I am. I am so generous, and I'm so knowledgeable in Harry Potter lore that I can give you a third Harry Potter fact to buy you even more time to pop over to Jesse Gender's video, the link for which is right here. Once again, click that link, go over there, leave a comment, leave a like, okay? Here's the third Harry Potter fact, okay? Did you know that, uh, that Albus Dumbledore is a former Nazi? Yeah, uh, I'm not kidding you. So uh, in the, I've said that way too much this section. I've said it way too many times. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the text of the book, uh, he was previously associated with his lover, uh, Grindelwald, a, a, uh, a uh, magician who was known for siding with the Nazis. Um, and in fact, Albus Dumbledore agreed with him for a very long time uh, until he finally defected and stopped being a Nazi because he realized the, uh, the pureblood stuff was a little bit sussy. Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, I mean, congratulations on being a former Nazi. Um, Grindelwald is played by Mads Mikkelsen. Okay, I can't complain about the Mads Mikkelsen casting because I fucking love Mads Mikkelsen. Um, but yeah. So what did we go over? We went over the racist naming conventions. We went over the anti-Semitic stereotypes. We went over the other racist naming conventions. We went over the, uh, the, how the book justifies slavery by implying that there are races that are that need to be enslaved we went over the uh the uh 
homophobic uh, AIDS anal uh, AIDS uh, allegory. We went over the uh, hilariously racist schools. We went over the poop teleporting. We went over the Albus Dumbledore or the uh, Aberforth Dumbledore raping goats. We went over the punitive rape. Uh, did I miss anything? Did I miss anything else? I don't think I have. Uh, I don't think I have any more. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. There's probably others. There's probably others. Oh! Oh, yeah! Oh, wait, there's one more! Okay, one more. One more, one more, one more. I'll give you one more, okay? And then I gotta go, because I've been going for eight hours and my back is starting to hurt and I have to be responsible. But here's one more, okay? Hold on. Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, did I just lose it? Hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah! There we go. Uh, Voldemort the most evil character in the entire series is heavily implied to be intrinsically evil from birth because he was the product of of rape and by that i mean his mother uh continually drugged his father with a uh, a illegally powerful love potion until he had sex with her and then uh and then she became pregnant. And it is very heavily implied that the reason he is evil is because he is a rape baby. Cool. Um, yeah, wild, huh? Harbor with the tier two sub, thank you very, very much. All right, that is all of the ones. Let me check and see, let's see. The moment of truth, let's see how the imps raid with love imp raid went. All right, all right, all right. We got a couple more. All right, we got we got about thirty more. We got about thirty more comments. Imps. All right, I won't guilt I won't guilt you anymore. Okay, it's been a long stream. 